Okay, if, if you were trying to do that in a normal show, you'd have to have 12 spot operators who knew the show intimately so that they never missed where somebody was going. And that kind of, they would have to know ahead of time where somebody's going. But with this thing, you can go wherever you want and it, it catches you. The only thing is, I think if you go... You have to be, there's a, there's a little bit of like an invisible line on stage sometimes. Yes. <laughs> if you go past it, it'll get And then big, it goes, whoa, 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 whoa. It'll get a little stuck. <laughs> so there are limitations uh, to it. I, I assume that nobody was aware of that. that no. Nobody can see that, right? Nope, we, nope. The little nubbins that we have on our <coughs> are, Didn't even notice it. So, I did. They're pretty hard to see. Sometimes they glow red a little bit, the infrared. Did, <laughs> yeah, it's it's you only see it really in the dark, and then there's the, the sensors are kind of around the yeah. periphery up there. There's some cameras up there. And I think there's some cameras on the side too. David, do you have a backup? Like, if you ever get sick, or or, or, or the members of the band too? Like, what happens? Well, the, the, Fred Armisen. Did the show go on? Right. <laughs> he knows the show really well. Oh, I've seen him do an imitation of me. <laughs> <laughs> Should be good, right? <laughs> there you go. We do have five standbys in the building that cover different roles. Oh, oh, oh wow. members of the band. Yeah, they cover the members of the band. Obviously not David, he's our star. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. What's up, what's up? This is Bobby Wooten, our bass player. Hi. Hey, Bobby. Thank you. Hi. Yes, I'm great job, everyone. All right, who has the next question? I think I saw a hand back yeah. here. Yeah. So is there a meaning why everybody can dare to be? Which are, oh, oh. Hi. This is Andy. Hi. Hello. after another uh, tried out different ideas for what we would wear I ended up with kind of a suit kind of thing because we thought oh it's going to be attractive but it doesn't I want to have everybody the same so that what it's about the, the person and not about what they're wearing and I ended up with suits and then I asked the lighting director what color would you like the suits to be medium gray because then he can he can make them disappear when we go into the dark and when he wants us to pop he can put a lot of light on us uh and then i thought what are we gonna what shoes are we gonna are we gonna wear shoes what are we gonna do uh we, can, we can't be wearing business shoes and <laughs> i I've, I've done it but i personally don't like uh like um running shoes with with a suit um although they're probably re probably really good for your feet <laughs> Um, but so I thought, let's try barefoot, and it has this feeling of you're connected to the earth. Although this is not the earth, it still makes you feel very grounded. Um, you're really connected to. I thought it was like grassroots. You know, you're all you're all yes, the same. Yes, really connected. And everybody feeling to uh, where you're still, what you're standing is not the earth, but it feels like yeah. you're at least connected. There's nothing between you and what you're standing on. Just to introduce a few more people that joined us, Mauro and Jacqueline down there from our percussion department. Carl, our keyboard player, and Angie, our. Who's got the next question? So, this is the last show I saw before everything shut down. For most of us, it's our first show back. So, I know how it felt different for us, and I'm wondering how it feels different for you being back. The masks, I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're you all having that experience. my face, I haven't seen yours, uh, but I, I can see people smiling with their eyes. But the first time we did a show and came back and the curtain came up, it was kind of took me aback for a second. I had to get used to it. I still do each time, but uh, I like the masks with the little designs on them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun, but I'm hoping eventually we can take the mask back off and just yeah. really yeah. connect one another. But you can feel the energy of the audience and that really feels good. But it's good to be back regardless. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else? Thank you for coming back. This, yeah. is, this is tremendous. Thank you. Especially after working so hard. Um, I guess to add on to that a little bit, I feel fortunate that we're doing like this in this Broadway setting where it allows it, because a lot of the touring musicians, friends of mine, it's not quite as like feasible. So it's, it's wild that we're still COVID 
is with you know, hopefully not in the building right now, but <laughs> here and um, we're doing like six shows a week, which is crazy. Oh wow! So we're real lucky. Yeah. Now I was thinking about that. I, I was hoping that you didn't do like a matinee as well because that would be just on Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> on, on Saturday. Oh. We do a That's, five and a nine on it's Saturday. It's exhausting. Mm-hmm. You know, just. Just the one performance is exhausting. <laughs> Never mind. Two. I think you build stamina with, you know, like, your, your body get conditioned. Right. So it's actually, instead of going to work out, come here and play. <laughs> Saturday's a marathon. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Saturday's a marathon. And we just had Stefan join us, who's another one of our professionals. Hello. So the choreography is on a group? Oh no, no, no! It's a m- most of it is from uh, Annie B. Carson, who is a choreographer I've worked with in the past. She has her own group called Big Dance, Big Dance Theater. Um, I think they have a show of band coming up, and I've worked with her a few times. She's she's amazing that she can work with trained dancers. Oh, there he is. This is perfect time. Here's Chris, one of our dancers. Chris, there you go. Um, and people, she can also work with people like us who <laughs> things and we don't know all the stuff, but she can take us through. Can you try this? Try this? Try this? And she'll push us. Like, can you do this? Let me see you do this and play at the same time. Yes, yes, sorry. And I'll do it and sing and play at the same time. Yeah. 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 And Chris. You choreographed Burning Down the House, right? I did, indeed, yeah. Amazing. <clears throat> I was captain of my high school's color guard, and Annie B was like, we need a marching band number. Can you just do it? <laughs> and I said, well, yes, I can. <laughs> you mentioned that you have a diverse group of people, right? France, Canada, Brazil, and such. Do you get influence from their music to in- infuse it in the, in the form? Or? Wow, well, I... <laughs> it's ineb- in- inevitable. Okay. We kind of we bring a little bit of our roots into sure. into the show. Sure. And but but David, I think he's been working with like musicians from different parts of the world mm-hmm. for a long time, right? Yeah. So, so I feel like it's bec- I've internalized it a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'll just come up with a rhythm and a song yeah. and. Mauro will go, oh, well, that's kind of a somber like, mm-hmm. vibe. We can, right. And we can kind of adapt that. Mm-hmm. Which is, uh, I think you're hearing, in, in popular music, you're hearing that a lot more mm-hmm. than you used to. Maybe kind of electronic kind of things uh, from Africa and Brazil, blending with, working with artists here, and you're hearing it kind of blending in with stuff here and, and people are kind of unaware of it they're unaware that oh that's a that's an African rhythm that's a Dominican rhythm right. that's a right. you know that's Brazilian in that way I was asking is because I saw so many different instruments that it's not usual to see right unless you are familiar with the other so other type of music so that's why it's interesting yeah. Yeah. and another thing just to say to that too like me being somebody that hasn't played much Brazilian music before, being around some of the greatest musicians that do it, um, but the communication that goes on in that music where it's like multiple percussionists forming this one thing. And so when you get like six isolated drummers slash percussionists, I, I mean, I think a big part of why it works is because of the background of, of them already kind of doing that and stuff. But it fits so well together, you know, when you, you have the, the different instruments all playing. And then the last piece of that fitting together is the yeah. front of house sound guy. And when, when you mention when you mention the like the question of is everybody playing live, and then then you demonstrated and everybody played a little bit, and then it all came together. So it's like yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was that was perfect. That was perfect. Thank Someone told a story I heard the other day. 
uh, a, 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 like a drummer friend of somebody's was listening and was it you telling this? Guitarist friend. A guitarist friend. Had he closed his eyes? Yeah, had he yeah. closed his eyes. It's a it's a great story. Yeah. He, he saw he could see that what he would describe as the elements of a drum kit, like spreading all over the stage, <laughs> and he just goes, I can't. My brain can't process this. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a drum kit. Right. So he would, but I can't. When I look at it, it's yeah. like this disconnect. Like it can't be. It can't yeah, yeah. be. So he would close his eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have time for two more questions. Oh, okay. Great. And I just really fast want to introduce Gustavo, who just joined us. How much did you uh, tweak the show from the, the tour versus now, or how did it evolve from the tour to the show now? Somebody else. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that there was like, I mean, obviously we're not in a like 100,000 person musical festival where everyone is drinking and out to party and <laughs> we have a much more captive audience. Um, so David definitely wanted to take advantage of that I think and so <clears throat> yeah we uh, wove this he wove this little slight light narrative one might say mm -hmm. not a quite a full narrative but just these ideas and honestly for us it was it was kind of intense to adjust at first we were like wait but we had everybody on their feet on the third song like what we had to tell it like, we're waiting now we're just they're just sitting there and oh my god oh, so you were all on the tour too and here you are almost in Broadway. Every, almost, every, almost everyone, yeah. Oh, but it was this incredible thing. I actually got to see the show a couple weeks ago for the first time. Um, and that was incredibly informative because I realized that the kind of silence in the audience, I mean, we're used to tour where people are, if you're not screaming, then we're not doing our job. <laughs> right. So, but this is a very different experience where if people aren't screaming, it's because they're listening. And this has been a really incredible experience to feel that, to be like, oh, actually, yeah. You're all listening the whole show, and then you get to jump up at the end and dance. It's Thank you, yeah. So we love it. Yeah, it also allows me to do talking, which <laughs> in, a, in a kind of a festival or concert thing, people would be like, shut up. And <laughs> start the We're here to hear music. We didn't come to hear, to hear you talk. <laughs> we did have headcount on the road, though, with most of, most of our shows. So we, yeah. you did do the voting do, speech. Yeah, some yep. of those I did the headcount talk. I think I did the Janelle Monáe talk. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Immigration. Yeah, I did oh, yeah. little bits, but they weren't, there weren't as many or as long. Yeah. No, yeah. booms, vava, booms, vava. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do that at Coachella, no. They, would, they, they probably would have liked that and understood right. it. Right. <laughs> booms, vava, man, yeah. <laughs> and you did reorder some of the songs, too, right? Yeah, we... Um, Naive was like way later. It was that was later. The Great Curse. Yes, there was. Uh, we used to end the whole set with Hell, Hell You. Hell You, yeah. So, oh, okay. Do you have a favorite number in the show? Collectively? Should we just go down quickly? What's your favorite number in the show? We'll start with Carl down here. Put him on the spot. Favorite number? Yeah. Uh, that's impossible. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, impossible. I mean, the last one. This is, this is one of the only shows I've ever played where every single song I look forward to and enjoy it so much. I love it. I mean, there's things about each one that I love. From a program, I'm a, the keyboard programmer too. From a programming standpoint, I, I really enjoy playing TV because it's just so much different electronica going on. Um, that's just, that's a blast. But everything, playing with these drummers, playing with everybody is just a thrill every song. So I can't. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'd say dance naive because I got it tattooed on my arm, uh, and then sing and slippery people. Absolutely. There you go. I've got once in a lifetime tattoo. Ah. Oh, wow. Cool. Who else has ever written? Chicken with donkey. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, woo. The zimbra is my favorite to play. I'll just keep this quick because I know we're in a rush. But it's, I like the rhythm and just playing with the drums and just the the contrast with the guitars talking to each other and uh, yeah, that's it. I like Road to Nowhere because it brings me so much joy. Just to hear it, to dance to it, to sing along with it, it just makes me happy. Some nights I like the, the well, the second one, uh, what's it called? I know sometimes a man is long, wrong, because it just goes, it's like I'm talking, and then the next minute I'm singing. And it just seems like to almost seamlessly go 
from one end to another, and I thought, oh, that's that's a nice vibe. If you go from like talking about something, suddenly you start to sing, and it seems to be a continuation of the same thought. And I thought, ah, oh, I don't remember how to try and do that. Appalachian <laughs> caller. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to it. Um, I'll say blind has been a lot of fun lately. I think there's a lot of rhythm section activity that's going on. Uh, that's great. And also, by the time we get to that point in the set, that's the song with the shadows, um, the, of the rest of the songs have kind of been like, it's like this. And that's a little bit more like there's a lot of fills and things going on. And, and drummers getting creative by opening up hi-hat clamps of other of the other drummers and stuff to make it happen, which is cool. Uh, I don't have like a favorite, you know, it's so hard to choose one, but every show I look forward to hearing David sing this line, the skin that covers me from head to toe, yeah. except a couple of tiny <laughs> holes. <laughs> it always, I cannot laugh, but it always makes me like smile. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love that line too. I'm, I'm with Carl. I think it's impossible to choose a favorite, but uh, I will with like little details. Like I just love Glass Concrete and Stone. I just love this, the lyrics and um, um, you know I, I like TV because it's just like ga 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 ga. Um, oh oh, um, dance like this for the Betty Ball, <laughs> and also just like our little our little little moment where we do the dance and people are like, what is happening? And they're like, oh, they're being funny. And then they start laughing and they get to laughing. And the last one that, I, that really stands out is, uh, um, oh no, I forgot it. I told you, I told you, I told you it was just so fun. You know, you're like, we're all dancing and everybody starts to get into it. So yeah, probably told you. Well, same for me, I enjoy all the songs. Uh, they all have something that I always enjoy. I, I particularly enjoy the, the very first song here. Um, I love the lyrics, it's the moment where I get ready. And um, I, I sing along with it, and I get ready, and I only have one note to play. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always the most difficult when you only have one note to play. <laughs> <laughs> the, the percussionist in the orchestra who has like all this paper with one note. <laughs> I judge how good he does this stuff. <laughs> it's the last note of the song. So there's a whole like, finger system up to ten. I never And Gustavo. Bloody hell. I like the whole show. Not the show. Since they began. So, my, I don't have to. Thank you guys so much for coming to see us. That's Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for working all the time. Yes.